Hey y'all, how are all my beautiful friends doing? I hope you all had an amazing weekend and if you celebrate Easter, I hope you had a fantastic one and you were able to celebrate with your family and just spend quality time with them. So I wanted to first mention thank you so much to all of y'all that were on my live last week. I had so much fun and I wanted to touch on that real quick. I said that I was going to go live this coming Wednesday, which will be tomorrow, but we've got so much going on. We're actually packing. We're moving next week. So I think it will be easier for me to go on live next Wednesday instead, either Tuesday or Wednesday. Y'all head over to my community tab here on YouTube and I will update y'all in what day and time. It will most likely be around 8 o'clock p.m., but I will update you on exactly the day that we're going to go live. So I hope to see y'all there. And if you have been following me for quite some time now, you will know that I am going to be on Judge Steve Harvey and that day has came. It's going to be tonight on ABC at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you check that out. I'm excited and nervous. I, I can't believe it's We filmed this back in November, so I can't believe the day is actually here and to see myself on TV would be Steve Harvey, that's going to be super weird. You bought this suit because you're hurt. You miss your friendship, and you feel like she did you wrong. You miss your girl. You're thinking your girl ain't never been there for you in your biggest moments. Let me ask you something, Stephanie. Do you regret not going to the wedding? Now, yes. But in that moment, no. Why now? Explain. Because it is 24 years of friendship that we threw, well, I guess I threw away. What, wait a minute, here we go. I be damned. <laughs> We've got the first admission of guilt. Oh my goodness. Wait a minute, thing that makes this court different. I have the ability to play stuff back. Put what I need to see on this screen. Oh, no. Because it is 24 years of friendship that we threw, well, I guess I threw away. I should have been a lawyer. Today's video is all about Orsalia Gall. She is a 51-year-old mother of two and wife living in New York. Her body was found in a duffel bag, hockey bag, on Saturday by a man walking his dog. a mother to two boys, 17 and 13 years old. She was planning her 13 year old's bar mitzvah and she loved to travel. She traveled quite a bit as I have seen on her Facebook post. She also loved theater, ballet, she loved going to concerts, and she was just known to not only be very beautiful, but very kind, loving. Everyone in her neighborhood and that knew her, I have not seen one bad word said about her, that she was just always joking around, always very friendly to everyone, and just a very caring person. And investigators believe that she was killed by a male that knew her. She lived in her home in Queens with her husband and her two children. Now, her husband and her oldest, 17-year-old, were on a trip traveling to Oregon to look at different colleges for their son to go to. So they were not even in town when this situation occurred. The 13 year old was in town though and he was from my knowledge at the home. Just after 8 a.m. on Saturday, this past Saturday, a man was walking his two hound dogs down Metropolitan Avenue in Forest Park Drive. His hounds ended up sniffing on this hockey bag. You know, they're hounds. They are very, have a very keen sense of smell. So they started sniffing around this hockey bag. The man ended up opening it up and seeing human remains in there. And then he noticed that there was on the 
actual hockey bag. So he immediately called investigators. Investigators ended up spotting a blood trail that led from where the bag was located all the way back to Orsala's home. Now, her home is not far at all. It's just like a few blocks away. And since this case is so new, originally when it first came out, I saw that blunt force trauma could have been the cause of death. But now I'm seeing a bunch of reports coming out that she was allegedly stabbed 58 times in her neck, torso, arms, and hands. Now again, since this case is so new, not too many details have came out about it, but I'm sure we will hear more and more details as time goes on. Now again, what I'm about to say are very conflicting. I've seen some reports say that Orsala went out with a female friend Friday night, and then I've seen some reports say that she went out with a male friend on Saturday night. Police did take Orsala's 13-year-old into questioning, but they did eventually release him. Now, since he is a minor and his mother was not able to be with him during questioning, his father and his brother were on their way back to New York from Oregon. So legally, they could not question him that long. So he was released, but from my knowledge, he was at the home during this whole incident and he had no idea about the crime that was committed. Investigators are now trying to get access to her phone as well as her bank statements to find out her last activity. Now the neighborhood that this family lived in was a very expensive neighborhood, upwards to two million plus dollar homes. And I'm sure a bunch of people had video surveillance on their homes. One in particular is this still photo right here from a video image of this person walking with this hockey bag. Now, they obviously didn't get too far. I'm not quite sure why they ended up dragging her in this bag. From what I have heard, she was dismembered, um, but they did take her from the basement and that is where the crime happened, was in her basement. And then they put her in this hockey bag and walked a few blocks away and left it there and walked back. I am hoping that other neighbors have caught footage and tried to see like where this person was heading back towards. And again, in another article, I saw that police are now believing that she went out that Saturday night when she returned home late Saturday night. That is when this whole incident, horrible, tragic incident occurred. And allegedly an unknown source did say that she told her 13 year old son that she was going out with some friends when really it was a man. So I'm not sure again, this case is extremely new, but I thought that this was completely disgusting and horrible. It is also said that after Orsala was murdered, the killer text her husband from her phone saying, your whole family is next. And they alleged that Orsala put them in jail and he is back now, or she, and they're ready for revenge. Now, since she's a stay-at-home mom, it makes me wonder, was she previously in law enforcement or some type of lawyer? Or was she on a jury and a witness to something or just on a jury and that was a conviction to somebody that ended up having to go to jail? I don't know. This is very bizarre. Very few details are out, which leaves us all wondering and guessing and trying to figure out what happened to this beautiful woman. Now, the surveillance video was captured at on Saturday. Well, I guess early, early morning on Sunday at 4.30 in the morning. So if you saw anything, if you know anything, please call in this tip line that I'm about to mention in the end of this video. And the neighbors obviously are completely heartbroken over her loss and they're shocked because she was such a kind-hearted person and the neighborhood is a fairly safe neighborhood. Everyone's trying to piece together what's happened. Yeah. How did this happen? Why did this happen? This is unimaginable by anyone's standards. I really didn't know what the family dynamic was or, you know, what their domestic situation was at all. So again, this leaves so many questions. How? Why? 
who is this person that did this? A lot of people are questioning about her son, the 13 year old, and I don't want to get into that. He is a minor and if he is innocent, my goodness, like I feel so bad for this kid because people are assuming so many things on social media. But I do find it's odd. You know, then again, teenagers, they're up in their room. They have music blaring. He could have had headphones and just never heard a thing. But then again, it is weird if all that occurred in the basement while he was upstairs and he had no clue about it. And my heart goes out to this whole entire family. I hope answers come very swift and justice comes soon. They figure out who is behind this madness. I am absolutely positive law enforcement knows a whole bunch of details and they are just putting the pieces together as we speak. But again, if you have any information, please call the anonymous tip line at 1-800-577-TIPS. And y'all let me know if y'all have heard about this and what you think. Um, I I'm shocked. I don't have enough information, obviously, right now to form an, an opinion, um, but as time goes on and more information comes out, I obviously will 100% keep y'all up to date on this case because answers and justice need to come. Like, in a, in a duffel bag? A hockey bag? Like, what? And then this poor neighbor that was just simply walking his dog and spotted this horrific scene. I can't imagine what he was thinking or what he is going through and the trauma that he's processing, the trauma that her kids are gonna deal with and her husband and, yeah, I don't, this is insane. So y'all leave your thoughts and opinions down below and if you liked today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would love to have y'all join this amazing community over here. I just noticed my lights are off. <laughs> I usually always have them on. Whatever, we're gonna roll with it, okay? Soon, y'all won't even see this bed in my background. I will have my own room to film in. What? Who am I? It's crazy, crazy, but I'm so blessed. And thank you again so much for watching. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Don't forget to hit that bell notification so you get notified whenever I upload a video. And yeah, have a great week. I will see y'all in Friday's video and I love y'all so very much. I hope you'll stay safe, be aware of your surroundings and take care. Bye y'all.